Okay guys, so this is a recording of um, last week's lecture, both the part 1 and the part 2. Um, I originally didn't plan to record a part 1 because um, this was supposed to be like an in-class lecture, but I have some people in the class that have valid reasons for not showing up to class, so I'm going to record both parts. So the first thing you have to do is open the access, and then you're going to set up a blank database and just call it custom database part one and save it anywhere it doesn't matter okay so now you're going to have a blank database the instructions are in this word document right here all right so I'm just gonna move them side to side so I can see both of them okay so first thing create a table called customer right so I'll just re I can just right right click in the table or Rather, I'm just going to hit design view and um, call it customer. Okay. The first thing I said, how to have customer ID as the primary key. This key sign right here is the primary key. And you can see that is automatically auto number. So I'll leave it like that. Second one is last name. And that's short text. For you to make it required, you have to go all the way down here. You see how this says no? Make it yes. Next thing is first name. Also short text and make it required. So change this right here to a yes. Next is middle initial. And um, that's short text. Short text um, the field length, this is where you set it to 1, just change this field size to 55, change that to 1. Um, phone number, make it short text as well, field length, make it 12. And the last thing is email, and make that a hyperlink. Okay, so just save the database, I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to hit the database, the design, the data sheet view so I can start entering my data. Um, so I'm just going to start typing all these customers here up to Perry Abigail. Um, so, Con Aaron. And you see that it's not actually in the right order. Like it's not in the same order as the customer list, but you just have to do the order that you have there. So this says phone number first. I'm just going to enter the phone number. Six five two five 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 zero one one five. And the email is Aaron Zero at Adventure Works com. This is Aaron. Okay, so you have con as the last name Aaron. The middle is in initial is nothing. Phone number, email address. And you're going to enter all 10 records like that. All 10 records are going to look like that. So I'm not going to waste my time entering the 10 records. You guys do that. Um, step number three. Um, for these ones, for these numbers that have um, this parentheses and this um, country codes, remove the country code. So for this number, start from 500. Um, and I'm just going to and do start from 500. So the phone number for Diaz Aaron is going to be 500-555-0130. So that way you can fit it into the 12 characters. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new table. This is step number three. A new table and I'm just going to call it um, inventory okay okay so um inventory it says that um, I have item ID as auto number and the primary key 
item name a short text item price as currency um, number and stock as number and um, item picture as um, attachment okay enter the following data into the table so I'm just going to right click and save do the data sheet view enter the following data into the table so I have back packs for 39 39.99 and I have 173 of them in stock so basically right I have this item picture right here that um it should say zero what I want you to do is I want you to go to the internet and download pictures for each of these items so backpack calculators whatever so the first item so I'm just going to go to google.com and um, say um, backpacks um, let's see sorry I don't have internet Sorry, waiting for my internet, so hopefully it loads really soon. Why is it working? Okay, so here are pictures of backpacks. You can go to Google Images and then um, you can pick whatever one so let's say I like this backpack for example I can just right click and save the image to anywhere let's say on my desktop um, let me call this backpack jpeg um, so now in my access file I'm just gonna click on this zero file right here this zero number double click on it hit add then go to where you saved it so this is going to be backpack and then okay it's just going to change to the number one um that's what you that's exactly what you need um when you've generated reports you can see the full picture of the backpack pop open but for now you're just going to see the number one beside it okay so back to the instructions um, calculators you are going to do the same thing for all 10 um, all 10 items on the database so I'm just going to go ahead and enter the records okay so basically now you can see um, I only have three records entered fill in the pictures again is a waste of time for me to kind of show you guys spend just have you guys watch me enter the data so I'm just going to move on all right so step number five create a table called um, point of sales I'm just going to create another table design view call it point of sale um, so you have transaction ID auto number this is customer last name and I said look up from the customer table so I want you to go to the customer table and find out the last name so click on look up wizard I you want to look up the field the customer table and go to last name enter it next next um, and finish if you enter this correctly you should have 10 last names here I only have one because I've only entered one name in my database so I'm just going to finish that yes say to save it okay um, transaction date call this date and time um, and I said enter the default value as 1117 
change the default value, you have to go down here and um, change the default value to, I'm sorry, just type 11, 17, 14 here under default value. Just type 11, 17, 14. And this is not really showing much because I kind of have my view minimized, so maybe I can make it bigger. There you go. All right, so moving on, um, item purchased. Remember, I this is what item do you did you purchase from my store, and I want you to go and look it up from. Um, I want you to go and look it up from the inventory table. So that's there, and I want to see the item name. Next, next, and. If you do this correctly, you're going to have the 10 items that you've entered there. So just finish on that and save it. And on this last one, quantity purchased, you want to save that as number. Okay. So that's it for this table. Save it. Um, and now for this table, I want you to enter 20 records into this table. So example. The first one, customer name, let's say Khan, um, he purchased um, a backpack, he purchased 10 backpacks, for example. Um, I want you to enter 20 different records. So you see how you see one here? I want you to go down to 20 and make up the values yourself. Make up the value for the customer name, the um, and the date is always going to be 1117 for this. So leave it as 1117 and the quantity purchased. All right. Um, so make up 20 different values for this one. So let's see. Um, create a query that shows the customer name, item. I'm sorry. Enter the records into the table. Enter a list of 20 items. So we talked about that. Step number seven. Create a query that shows the customer name, item name, Total number of items sold, which is the quantity purchased, item price, total sales using builder, and the item picture. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say create a query. Um, the easier you can do a query wizard, but the easiest way to do I just do query design. Um, <clears throat> well, let's do wizard. We've done wizard in the past, so let's just do this one. So query wizard. I want the customer name. So take the last name. Total number of items sold. Um, how do you know the total number of items sold? You know that from the in, from the point of sale table, right? How many items did you purchase? So quantity purchased, right? Item price is in the inventory table. Um, total sales is going to, going to generate using builders, so leave this alone. And item picture. Item picture is also in the inventory table, so just put that there. All right. Next, um, detail. Yes. Next, then do modify the query design and finish. Okay. So now these are these are the things that I have here for now. Remember, I if I just run this, if I just run this the way that it is, right? And you should have a line that that connects this to this. If I just run this the way it is, um, so I hit run. Um, I'm just going to see one value. You're going to see as many values as how many people has purchased. So you should you should have twenty things here when you look at yours. All right. Um, so, but I want to also do the total sale using Builder. So right here, I'm just going to click on this right here and hit Builder. So under Query Tools Design, I'm going to hit Builder, and I'm just going to type total sales and put a colon. Total sales is the same thing as quantity purchased multiplied by item price. So quantity purchased. Note the way that it looks. Um, feel free to pause the video and um, re re rewind it several times. And sorry, I don't sound as excited as I usually sound. Um, and this is obviously not recorded in class. I had to record it um, outside of class. So multiply by item price. Okay. So look at the builder again. Total sales equal to quantity purchase multiplied by item price. Okay. Um, and you can move it now to this place. Now when you run it, you can see that this is 10 times. 
$39.99, which gives you $399. Okay, so we have that one, and we should call this um, query, save this query as um, So let's just call this point of sale query. Leave it as leave it as it is. All right. So now, and you can just right click and save it. Um, generate a report that shows the eleven seventeen sales. So just generate a report based on this query that you have here, um, with your name on the report. I said group by item name, and show the totals for all the items sold and money realized. Ensure that your picture shows on the report and then make sure it shows on one page okay so now let's create the report just click on the the point of sale query go to create report so now you have created a report out of this right again if you do it right you should have 10 items um, or 20 items here or however many items you sold to people on your point of sale table is you're going to have that 20 different records so now I said um, Sort by let's see group by item name so all right so I um, don't have item name here under your query originally so close out this report don't save it under your query originally I should have had item name here so right here just double click on this and put the item name here you can just drag this all the way um, here so for the query you want the customer last name the item name the quantity purchased the item price do the total sales using builder and then the picture so now if I run it um, I can see that con bought backpacks 10 of them for $39.99 this is how much he paid or she paid total so you can save that now and create the report um, because we need we need the report for the we need the item name for the report so you have a report now this is what it looks like first thing that you're going to do you're going to do group so you're going to go under the report layout tools design group and sort once you hit group and sort you're going to see these two things come up at the bottom add a group so just click on add a group and select item name you're going to see all the item names and all the customer names and all everything staggered under now if you have 20 different items depending on how many people that you sold to you should have 20 different items in your point of sale um, you're going to see all the 20 items categorized by which items you sold all right so hit this 39 and net right here so under item price you don't want to see the subtotal for item price so click on that value there and delete it because you don't want it. Next thing that you want, you want to see the total quantity purchased. So you just, just hit quantity purchased right here. And this is under the layout view, just in case you get lost. All right. Um, so you hit totals and then hit sum. You should see 10 appear here. Make it bigger. Just make sure that everything kind of fits. All right. Do the same thing for total sales so that way you know how much you made a total. So go to totals and sum. Okay, now we're going to format this as currency because 399 is currency. So just right click on this 399, go down to properties, and under format, select currency. This is the third option. Next one is the same thing, um, select currency. <coughs> And um, you have to make it all fit in one page. So you see how this customer last name is kind of big. You can reduce it. Um, you know it fits in one page when this line um, has everything in it. So quantity purchased as well. Well, that we cut off the name, so don't do that one. But maybe you should do this one right here, which is the item name. And now you can see I've squeezed it into one page. Just make sure you double click on the name of the query, on the name of the re report, and just put your name. So my name is Judith, and um, just put your name there so I know that way I know who you are. All right? um, and that is it for this report. So your, yours is going to look much bigger and much nicer than mine, but you guys will get, I hope, get the point with this. I'm just going to save this point of sale. Let's call this report. 
um and that's it okay so now what you're going to do this is the part one of the file all right this is the file that you should turn in under the part one of the assignment um so now i'm going to move on to the part two of the assignment first things first um enter 20 more records into the point of sale enter five records for each of the following dates so basically you're going to go back to the point of sale table which is this one remember you or you should already have 20 records here you should already have 20 records here for 11 17 right so now what you're going to do now is you're going to so let's say i have 20 records here hypothetically speaking right up to 20. now if you want you're going to enter 20 more records but remember how we we left all these dates as 11 17. um for this new 20 records you're going to put the first five records for 11 15 which is the 15th of november the next five for 11 16 the next five for 11 18 and the next five for 11 19. so what does this mean it means that altogether in your point of sale table you're going to have a total of 40 records so this should say record 40 out of 40 right of those 40 records five of them should be 11 15 november 15 and you can modify this date when you get there um the next five should be 11 16 the next five i'm sorry the next 20 should be the original 11 17 that you entered the next five should be 11 18 and the last five should be um 11 19 i think so 40 records altogether i hope that's clear um, next thing, create a query that shows the customer name. Okay. So we're going to just say, and again, my queries are not going to, they're not going to look anything like yours because I do not have the full data. I don't have all the data in my tables. I think that I don't need to do that because you guys can easily do that. So I'm just going to show you guys how to create the queries and how to create the reports. And hopefully you can make everything else work. Okay, so you're going to say create a query that shows the customer name. How do you do that? You do create and this time go to query design. This is going to be much easier. Okay, and add all three tables. For you to add it, just click on the table, hit add, um, inventory, hit add, point of sale, hit add. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so it should look something like it should look something like this and it kind of made it look weird because my 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 monitor is really small but um I, i'm going to try to make it so you guys can see it okay it should look something like this on, on your computer all right okay so i said i want Customer name, item name, quantity, purchased item, price, and total sales. Basically, pretty much the same thing as you did the last time. But I only want the items purchased from 1116, between 1116 and 1118. So I said I want the customer last name. Um, item name. Quantity purchased. So, um, item purchased. And then the quantity purchased item price which is from the inventory table um, and total sales using builder so I'm going to do the exact same thing go to builder total sales and this is going to be quantity and don't bother yourself if this doesn't pop up automatically it doesn't always do that so quantity purchase multiplied by item price and do OK. Um, so you should have that. If you run it now, you should see the same thing that we had before, right? So this query is very similar to the first one, except for this time I said for all items purchased between 1116 and 1118. So you're now going to, how do you know the things that are purchased between 1116 and 1118? It's the transaction date. So just double click on the transaction date to make it appear here or just click on the drop down 
um, if that makes you feel better all right but under the criteria type between 11 16 14 and 11 18 14 do you see that between 11 16 14 let me see if I can make this bigger can we this grow bigger okay so on the criteria type with between 11 16 and 11 18 and access is going to automatically add like the pound signs and then make this capitalized all right now if you run it you should see um you should see how many items you should see so 16 you should see 16 that's five um you should see 17 that's 20 and 18 so you should see 30 records i'm going to see nothing for mine okay so i'm going to see one which is the one i entered but you guys should see 30. you should see at least 30 things down here because you've already entered 40 records in your table um so that's that query and um i'm just going to save this query so i'm just going to right click and save it as just save it as query 13 all right so now you have three tables and you have two queries one report okay moving on step number 14 create an additional field in the inventory table called remaining quantity updated type number okay so in the inventory table I'm going to say view I'm sorry <clears throat> First of all, to just remove all the confusion, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to close everything. Save any changes that you need to save. All right. Okay. So now everything is closed. I'm going to go to inventory, open this up. Remember, I only have three records here, right? Um, I'm going to say, um, what, what, create I want an additional field called remaining quantity of type number. So I'm going to go to the design view. Now, I'll add one more field of type number. All right? Um, and just save that. So now, when you go to view, you should now see this additional field right here. But everything should be blank. Okay. So, let's see. That's step number 14. Step 15. Use a query to create a brand new table called sold inventory. That contains the item name and the total quantity of items sold. Alright? So you want the item name and the total quantity of all the items that have been sold from your transaction table. Um, so let's say, let me just add one more record here. So to Khan, I'm going to sell him um, calculators and I'm going to sell 30 of them to him. Okay, just for the sake of calculation, all right? Remember, you should have 40 records. I only have two because I don't want to waste you guys, I don't want to waste your time having you watch me enter blank records. Um, okay, so just save this. Save, I'll close. Okay, so use a query to create a brand new table called sold inventory that contains the item name and total quantity of items sold. I want to see all the item names with the name with the total quantity of all the items sold so for example if you sold here item number three let's say backpacks again right let's say I sold five you see here I've sold 15 um, backpacks to con and 30 calculators so when I run my data that's the result that I should see um, so let's see I'm going to go create query design usually when we start and just add add all three tables so just do add inventory add and point of sale add usually when we um usually when we do these things right when we when we um do access this if you notice here this selects always is always clicked that's why we just keep doing things but instead of using this select we're going to do this option this kind of query that lets you make a table you're gonna hit make table and call the table I'm sorry call the table um sold inventory call the t I'm sorry call the table sold inventory okay okay
okay so now what do what do I want to see I want to see the item name which is item purchased right and I also want to see the sum of all the trend all the the sum of all the items that have been purchased which is quantity purchased all right so I want to say I'll say um quantity purchased but remember I said I wanted to see the sum. I just if you run it now you're going to see you're about to pay three rows yes you're going to see a new table pop up here sold inventory which is what you created this is not going to show you results like the other queries because you use it to create a table so just double click on the new table and you see you see three records and um, this should be a name so let's see um, Hold on, quick. Go to um the query. Go to this query and close it. So let's see. If you do, you know, just to make sure that this put item name here instead. So delete this, but um put item. Make this item name from the customer table. I'm sorry, from the inventory table. Make sure this is item name. All right, so that way we don't we, we get a name. I want to see the back the name and the quantity purchased. Okay, so going back there, <clears throat> for you to see the total, you notice that if you click run, you only see you only you see the individual number of items. I want to see backpacks um, like summed up to fifteen. I want to see the total of all the all the items per uh, the total quantity per item. What does that mean? It means that for this table, you have to see, I'm going to see a total of 10 items because you only have 10 different items in inventory. No matter how many of them you've put, you've sold, you're going to see a total of 10 items. So how do you do that? Um, so close this. You're going to go back to the query and here, go to under query design, hit totals. Then under here, go and hit sum. So you hit totals, this total thing appears here, um, drop down, instead of group by, hit sum, and now run it. You should say the table will be deleted, say yes, because you're making it, are you about to paste two rows, say yes. So now if you look at this, you should see now, this should say backpacks, I've sold the sum of the quantity of, per the sum of quantity purchase, which is this, um, 15 and this is 30. Guys, I'm really sorry if like I, I, I sound terrible and not excited to do this. Um, this is at 1 a.m. and I'm just trying to get this done with all the other work that I have to do. So um, bear with me. I hope this um, instruction helps you complete your homework. Okay, so that's that query. And um, I said, what did I say? I say save the query as sold inventory query. So right click and save as sold inventory query. So now you see you have three, four tables, one, two, three, four. You have three queries, one, two, three, and you have one report. So we're going to do the very last item, which is um, the, um, use a I said use a query to update the remaining quantity field of the inventory table. All right. So we're going to go to, um, we're going to create a brand new query. So go to create query design. Enter three of the tables. You don't need to enter the sold inventory table. Or actually, you know what? Enter it. Because actually, you're going to need it. So I entered all four tables, right? Close. Now, I said... Remember, I said I wanted you to update... To update the remaining quantity field. Remember this field that you created here in the inventory table? I want you to update it automatically um, with the number of items remaining in stock. So originally you had some items in stock, right? But then you sold some of them. So what is left? That's what I want to find out. Um, so I'm just going to go right here, go right here, and um, I want to instead of select or make, while I'm making a new table this time, now we're updating a field. So click update, and here select remaining um, point of sale or inventory. Select the remaining quantity. 
So this is what you want right here. Double click here. This is what you want to update. What do you want to update it to? Um, so for you to update this, remember, you want to do the number you have in stock. So example, backpacks, let me go back to the inventory table. Backpacks, I have 173 of them in stock, right? So I've already sold 15. So I should have, let's say, um, 158 left if I do this correctly. Calculators, if I've sold 30, I should have 425 left. Just so you, just so you guys can do the basic math in your head um, and see that, um, and see that this works well. All right. So let's see. Update to um, use builder. Go to design and builder. And this is just going to be. You just want to say how the number you have in stock. Um, minus the sum of the quantity purchased. And bear in mind, please look at make sure you have the text right here all right make sure you have the the verbiage right else it's not going to work make sure all your like your capital letters and all those things are exact then space purchased um and now run it I'm about to update however many rows you have you may yours was probably say 400 rows that's okay yes and now if you go back to the inventory table you should see this is updated to 143 and this is updated to 425 um so that's so that's it guys let's see sold inventory um that's it your number should reflect your numbers here should reflect um let's see how much you've sold this number right here minus this number in the sold inventory i don't think mine is 100 percent correct but if yours isn't correct um you should go back and check it out um but this is what the query should look like all right and when you're done with this just save it as um save it as query number 16. all right just save it as 16 okay what do you now the only thing that you have to do and i just do right just go back to since you finished the part two go to file save as um access database save as save everything just save it and save it as um custom database part two And that's the part one and the part two of the assignment. I know that guys, this is not, I, I, I know this is not like the most enthusiastic recording, um, but it should give you some basic instructions on how to complete the assignment and submit it. If you have questions, as always, you know to email me and I'll try to help you as much as I can, but please don't email me last minute. Don't email me last minute because I may not be able to help you. Um, and please try to show up to class because if you show up to class, then we don't have to do this or show up and pay attention in class. Alright guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye.